Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella and today we're going to be making mini crystals. I'm so excited about this one. I absolutely love crystals. Uh, the ones that I'm pulling off my table right now are the real ones that I use for inspiration to make the little ones and these little ones are all ones that I made and they're made out of simple materials. I started making them because I, I needed something for the shelf that I'm lighting up there. So I wanted to have a crystal to sit on that shelf. So that's where I got the idea from to make these. All right, guys, I'm going to give you the supplies list. And real quick, uh, that shelf that I'm lighting up right now, I'm going to talk more about that at the end of this video. Okay, so this is only part one of this series. I have so many exciting things to share with you guys. All right, let's get on with the supplies list. Now, these two here I just pointed to are walnut shells. So I glued the crystals inside the walnut shells. If you need help on uh, opening up walnut shells without cracking them, I actually have a video here on YouTube that will show you how to do that. And I also show you how to hinge them quite easily. All right, so if you need some tips on walnut crafting, uh, you'll look for that video in the pin comment below. And of course, you don't have to use walnuts. If you have uh, acorn caps, you can glue your crystals inside of those. If they have stems on the back, even more fun because those become their own stand. In this video, I'm also going to show you how to glue crystals to the uh, sea glass. So if you have sea glass on hand, those are quite nice because they have a nice weight to them. I quite enjoyed making those. And then if you just want to make your own base, you can make it any size that you want in any shape. Then you just use some foil, masking tape, and some paper towel. And the crystals themselves are made from pink Himalayan salt. I got this from the dollar store, and it's the one that comes with its own grinder. It was like $2.50 or something like that. Um, I actually took some time to separate the colors because the, the salt inside comes in all different colors. You'll find if you take a handful, you'll find some crystal clear ones, you'll find semi-clear ones, some orange ones, and they go darker. So I did take some time to separate them because that made my life a little bit easier. You're also going to want something to grind the salt with. I use this rock and a lid, but if you have one of those herb crushing things, that would work as well. And one of the most important things is the glue. Now E6000, the clear transparent E6000, is my favorite. That worked really well in this project. Uh, you can use tacky glue, although the tacky glue, <laughs> it's a little bit more frustrating. It doesn't grab on as quickly as um, I would like. But I am going to do the very first one in this video using tacky glue so you can see how it can be done if you don't have any E6000 on hand. Okay, but E6000 is going to make your life a lot easier. And then the next most important thing is the color. Now I use this purple here. This is Sally Hansen purple craze, I believe that says. Uh, you might want to shop around for a better purple. I think I could have got a little bit more of a closer color if I would have looked a little bit longer at the store. But that's what I had on hand, so that's what I used. I also used some of this pink. Um, I forget the name of that one, but this light pink one to color some crystals as well. So the colors are really up to you. One of the most important nail polishes to get is this Sally Hansen Glitter Glam. This picks up the light so beautifully, and it's got that translucent sparkle in it. Don't get sparkle like this. It has that silver sparkle. That's going to make your crystals look fake. Okay, so the Glitter Glam, this one right here, is so pretty. It just is great, and you can cover all the crystals. The whole project can be covered in this Glitter Glam, and in the end, it just picks up the light so nicely. And I almost forgot, we also use like a pearl color. So this is Sally Hansen Extreme Wear uh, City of Gleams, I believe it's called. And any pearl light color will work. All right, so the back of my projects, all of them got the same colors. So they all look like kind of like stone. And to achieve that look, I used black, navy blue, hunter green, pewter gray, and granite gray. All right, guys, let's get started. Let's make some mini crystals. And remember, there are detailed timestamps in the pinned comment below. All right, so this is the very first one I ever attempted to make. And I was just using this real one that I had in my on my shelf as reference. It's actually quite beautiful. So I want to recreate this and put it on the uh, shelf uh, with, the, with the rest of the items there. So I'm going to start off with some foil. And I'm going to fold this up a few times, make a little like cradle base, one that fits where I want it to fit. So I'm, I'm, I have to keep testing it here to make sure it's going to fit on the top shelf beside the candles. So I'm just going to keep shaping this until I get the size that I want. 
and there we go we have the size so now that I have the foil base I'm going to cover this entire base with small bits of masking tape just going to make sure to cover up all the exposed foil and then I'm going to cover the masking tape in a layer of white glue this is Elmer's glue all and I'm going to take little bits of paper towel and I've already separated the paper towel layer so there's just one layer and I'm going to paint that on top of the masking tape I'll just push it into the glue and now uh, dip my brush and then brush glue over top the paper towel so in the end I will have the entire piece covered with paper towel and looking at the back here there's a bit of texture that I want to add using the paper towel so I'm going to take a little piece and I'm just going to dip it right in the glue and then I'm going to squish it up and stick it on the back so I'm just going to create a little bit of a bump there and this will shrink up quite a bit when it's dry so um, it's not going to do that much. Um, you could use textured paint to do the same thing and I'll show that later on in the video. But this will just add a little bit more texture and now I'm going to let that dry. Once it's dry I'm going to give it a coat of black paint and let that dry. And once that's dry then I'll give it a coat of navy blue and I'll let that dry. Alright it's dry we're ready to add the uh, other colors and this is hunter green. I'm just going to lightly brush it over. I have a stiff brush and I don't want to cover up the entire navy blue. I'm just lightly brushing over the green just to give it a tint of the green. And again, that's hunter green. And I was dabbing it on there. So it's a little bit darker in some areas, just dabbing it here and there. Try to match the tone of the amethyst that's sitting in front of me there. All right, now I'm going to highlight with the pewter gray and I'm just using the cap. I'm getting the majority of the gray off my brush and I'm going to dab this on. So again, not brushing, just dabbing. And now I'll do the same thing with the light gray. Uh, but this one I'm just going to go very lightly, just dabbing here and there. And if I put too much on, I'll just rub it off or I'll use the darker gray and cover it up. And looking at that, it looks pretty good. Uh, there was a little dip in the real one, so I just created a little dip with the back end of my paintbrush. Then I added a bit too much light gray, so I'm going to cover that up with the darker gray now. And it actually turned out really good in the end once I got it figured out here, <laughs> once I got the right color in there. And I can do that because the material is still a little bit soft because it is dry, but it's gonna take another day or so for it to totally cure. So now is the time to be adding those dips and stuff like that. And then I edged out the, the entire edge and a little bit ways down the sides with that pearl colored nail polish. You can use white paint as well, but just on the very edge of the uh, piece and I'll let that dry. And once that's dry, we can go ahead and add our rock salts. Now I separated some clear ones and some semi-clear ones, and these are the ones I'm going to use to fill up my, my base with. So you can see the different colors of the rock salts there. I ended up separating them into this little tray to just make my life a little bit easier. So I'll keep these um, beside me, and I'm going to use tacky glue. But like I said in the beginning, I'd rather use E6000. I'm only using the tacky glue to show you that you can use it. I found the E6000 so much easier to use. It just grabbed onto those rock salts a little bit easier than this tacky glue does. But anyways, let's carry on. You can, I was just looking at that one again before I start here. I'm just going to grab some clear ones and some semi-clear ones. I'm just going to fill up this base. And just uh, odd sizes and it doesn't really matter. You can look at crystals and see they all kind of form in various ways. There's no right way to do this. Just going to fill up this base, sticking uh, the majority or the bottom part of the rock salt in, right into the glue. And I'm going to fill up this entire base and I'm going to make sure I squish everything together um, as best I can. And I found with the tacky glue some of the salts would drop out and I would have to add more glue. Um, again E6000 didn't do that and I didn't have to keep applying E6000. But while I was making this one on camera for you, I had to add in some more tacky glue now and then. <laughs> I, was, I was struggling here and I was just used to the E6000. But this will eventually grab on and it'll be fine. But I had to keep adding the glue and sticking the salts back in there. And then I'm going to let it uh, sit and dry. I'm going to leave that for about an hour. And in the meantime, I've picked out some clear rock salt and I'm going to crush these using this lid and a rock. Of course, if you have a herb crusher, that would work as well. Uh, but this is what I had on hand. If you got your salt in the jar itself, it usually has the grinder attached to it. You can use that as well. Uh, the only thing I found with that is you can't separate the colors, of course. So the grinder is on the left side. You can see all the colored salt in there and it's not as fine 
as I wanted it to be. So picking them out and crushing them separately uh, worked well for me. You get a more clear, finer crush than you would using the uh, grinder. All right, so I let my piece sit for about an hour, like I said, and now I'm going to add a bead of tacky glue around the edge, and then I'm going to stick that salt that I just crushed into that bead of tacky glue. And once I get it all in there, I'm just going to squish it all together. Just make sure everything's got full contact, that salt and that glue. And now I can set this under the fan and let it dry. So I gave that about an hour and now I'm going to add some color. Now you can see the tacky glue is still white. It's going to dry clear eventually, but it is dry to the touch right now. So I'm going to go ahead and add uh, my color. This is another reason why I like E6000 because it is clear and you don't have to um, struggle to see <laughs> what you're painting. But anyways, I'm going to add this first layer and I'm just doing it very lightly. I'm going to leave some of the clear parts showing and paint over some of the other parts. Once this is dry, I can go ahead and add another cut coat. You are going to keep adding coats until you get the desired color. Okay, so you can do it once, twice, three times, four times. It's it's up to you. And around the bottom edge of the crushed rock salt, I'm adding this pearl colored nail polish. I'm just going to do a line around, kind of matching again the piece that I'm using as inspiration. Um, later on, I'm going to paint over parts of this. So I'm not too worried about the thickness of the line, but I do want to have a line there. Um, I think it's looking pretty good right now, but I've decided to add a few more clear crystals around the back here, oh, along the side as well. And I'll stick a couple where there's holes in between the top ones. Um, this was just last minute decision here. So E6000, I've decided to ditch the tacky glue because it just takes too long for that white to disappear. And I want to get this video up for you guys. So. Um, the tacky glue will work, but E6000 is much faster. <laughs> so you can see I stuck one in there in a in a, in a hole between um, some of the crystals that I had already painted with the nail polish. I'm just going to go around with this clear and we'll be right back. All right, I made it all the way around and you can see I added a whole uh, other layer of those white or clear crystals. So now I'm going to do the crushed crystals around the bottom of those. So again, E6000, and then I'll just push the crushed rocks right into there. And I'll go all the way around and we'll be right back. All right, so I made it all the way around. I let it sit for about five or so minutes just so that glue would grab on. And now I'm just going to paint a couple uh, more with this uh, purple nail polish. So I'll just go around here and there very lightly. And I do add some to the outside to the very clear ones. Uh, just one coat sometimes will do it. You'll notice on real crystals that they'll have just a slight tint of color and then there'll be some really darker ones. So I'm just doing that to this one here. And here we go. And now I'm just going to let this sit for a few minutes and then I'm going to add another nail polish. And this one is Glitter Glam and it's the clear and it works beautiful on all colors and uh, the clear ones, the colored ones, all of that. You can put it over the whole thing. And the light really picks up the sparkle in this one. So I just went around the edge and I'm going to do the top as well. Absolutely beautiful. And it's going to look like this when it's dry as well. All right, so we're moving on to the sea glass. Now we don't have to make a base. We just have to choose a piece of sea glass. And I really like these ones because it has a bit of weight to them when they're done. So I have a couple pieces here. One uh, piece is thicker than the other. I'm going to use the thicker one because that one's going to give me a paintable edge. But again, it doesn't really matter. Crystals, they all look different. Um, there's no right way or wrong way. But I, I do want to paint the edge, so I'm going to use the thicker one. Anyways, moving on, we're going to be using E6000 to uh, work with this piece. So I'm going to add a layer on the top side here. And this is going to be a generous layer of E6000, spreading it from edge to edge. All right, I'm going to be using mostly clear uh, rock salt here. So I'm just going to stick them all into that glue and again going from edge to edge and getting them as close together as possible. Once I get all those gaps filled up then I'm going to squeeze everything together just making sure it's all got full contact with that glue and most of the time I can always find a little a little bit more space to stick another one <laughs> so I just keep fiddling with it. I'm going to let that dry for about 20-30 minutes. Now E6000 takes 24 hours before it's totally cured, okay? Uh, but you can pick it up and paint the nail polish on there after about a half an hour or so. Alright, when that was dry enough to touch, I did add another row 
of clear rock salt around the uh, outer edge of the entire piece. Now this is not necessary to the project, it's just you go by whatever look you want to have. Okay, so I just decided last minute I'm going to stick those uh, clear pieces along the edge. So a bead of E6000 and then I tried to find the flatter pieces of rock salt, the clear ones, so that they would stick up fl more flat up against the uh, piece. Of course, and they don't have to be perfect, right? Because crystals go in all sorts of different directions. So um, you just want the flatter pieces so they'll stick in there a little bit easier for you. And now I'm going to add the crushed uh, clear salt as well. So I'm just going to make sure everything's sticking on there pretty good. And now I'm going to add a bead underneath that. And I'm going to add the clear crushed salt. So again, I went around the entire edge with this and then push that salt in there. Uh, you'll notice that the rock salt, once it hits the E6000, it goes kind of transparent looking. So just keep that in mind as you're working. Set for about a half an hour or so. And you can see the bottom here. I did paint first with a purple nail polish, one coat. I just wanted to see how that would look, um, if it made a difference underneath the paint, but it really didn't. So I, I painted all my sea glass pieces, most of them, with this navy blue. So I do uh, the coat underneath, and then I'm just doing a thin line just underneath where I put the crushed rock salt. So along the crushed rock salt itself, I'm going along with the uh, paint, but just a thin line here. Again, that's just personal preference for this piece. You can do it however you want to do it. All right, so once that was dry enough to touch, then I took the glitter glam, and I went along the crushed rock salt itself gave a nice coat or a nice layer there and I'm going to be going over top all the crystals with this uh, same nail polish as well because it just adds that nice sparkle and shine to it. So here's a different piece that I was working on. I'm just showing you an up close uh, look of it and it already has one coat it looks like of this glitter glam. I'm going to do a second coat here but I just like how this one turned out. It looks very very pretty. So I'm going over top the crystals as you can see themselves. It just picks up the light so beautifully, this nail polish does. And just popping in with an edit to show you the one sea glass I did do with the salt, I didn't color it. I just used that orange salt, that dark orange salt in the middle. And then around the edge, I did the uh, crystal clear salt. And then I just covered the whole thing with the um, glitter glam nail polish. And that turned out really pretty. So you don't have to color them, you can use the salt color. All right, guys, we're going to move on now. Uh, this is the sea glass ones that we just finished. And you'll notice that I didn't use black on the back of these uh, pieces of glass. I just went straight in with the navy blue. Um, one of them I'm going to be adding texture to, and that's this one right here. That texture is going to be further in the video, okay? And it's going to be in the timestamps below, and it's going to be called texture. All right, in the next clip, we're gonna be doing the acorns. Now this is done the same way you'll do the walnuts. You're just gonna glue your rock crystals into the bottoms. And then now I'm gonna show you how to edge them. Okay, so I don't wanna to have to glue all those on videos. It's done the exact same way I just did in the previous two projects. So you just glue in your crystals and color them uh, any color that you want to. And then now I'm gonna show you how to edge them. All right, so for the acorn, I've already glued the crystals on the inside and already painted them with the nail polish and now I'm just painting the outside so I'm going to do the same thing that I did in the very first piece so I'm going to do a coat of black and then the navy blue and then I'll do the green and all those other colors after and for this one I put the E6000 around the edge after it was dry enough to work with and I'll put the crushed rock salt into that bead of glue now you can layer this, you can uh, do one layer, let it dry for about 20 minutes or so, and then you can actually add another layer. So I got my first one there. And this was one of the first acorns that I did. And like I said earlier, when you put rock salt with E6000 or the nail polish, it kind of goes translucent. So I ended up doing another layer and this is how I realized that I could actually layer it. So this time I put the bead around and I just stuck the acorn right into the rock salt. It was a little bit easier. And I'll show you in a minute here, um, I think, yeah, this is the one. You can see this one side I just pointed to has the nail polish on it, that clear glitter glam nail polish, and the other side doesn't. So you can see how translucent it makes it. 
and that's a pretty look as well. I, I like both looks, um, but if you want to have a little bit more of that rock look, then don't put the clear nail polish on the entire um, piece. You could put it around the outer edge and then have the inside edge with a little bit more of the raw crushed rock salt. And here they are all done and cured. Everything is completely dry. So the one on the right is not colored at all. I didn't use any colored nail polish. I only used glitter glam. And I just chose the rock salts uh, with a little bit more color in them. So a little bit semi-transparent color in there. And then the um, edging, I use glitter glam over the, the salts themselves and then around the edge, of course. And the edging itself is the grinded rock salt right from the container. So you can see quite a bit of a difference there. If you pick out the clear ones, you get that nice clear look. I love both looks though. They look very, very pretty, both of them. And the walnuts were done the exact same way. So you just glue your salts into the bottom and you can layer them as well. Um, I think the one on the right there, the purple one, I had layered probably about three layers of rock salts in there to fill it up. This one only got like two layers or so. And the, I did make a stand for this one out of an acorn cap. I just cut a V shape. And then around the edge, I put a little bead of uh, E6000 and let it dry. So it, it won't move around. And it made a perfect stand. So just a little idea for you. All right, guys, we're going to move on to the texture. Uh, I'm going to give you two ideas for adding texture to the back of your crystals. So we'll start with the walnut first. And we're going to be doing texture paint. And then we'll move on to the sea glass where we're going to do a different kind of texture. All right, so one of the methods is to use textured paint. And this is acrylic craft paint that I have in my um, dish there. And I just put in a teaspoon of baking soda. You can use baby powder as well. I'm going to mix this up really well. And you can also Google how to make textured uh, paint. I'll give you more explanations there. And then you paint it on. And I'm using a, a, a lighter color here just so you can see the texture that I put in. But since I was going to do a base black coat, I could have done this with black paint. Anyways, once you get it painted on, give it about 30 seconds, maybe a minute, and then you can start dabbing it with your brush and creating some more texture in there. As the texture paint starts to dry, it gets a little bit more stiff, so you can play around with it a little bit more. Also keep in mind if you use baking soda, it could leave a film later on, and you just have to paint over that with just straight paint and you can get rid of that film. It'll be like a white uh, sort of salty film over top. Didn't happen to this one, but it can happen. Anyway, you can see me dabbing on the texture there. And there's the finished texture. Now I'm just gonna let this dry and here it is all painted. So that's the black, the blue, the green. I'm gonna review the colors in a minute with the next one, but this is what it looks like when it's all painted. And here's a walnut that I did that I did not do texture paint on. So you can see all the ridges and the lines in that walnut. And the one on the left has the textured paint and it looks it looks amazing. I also took a little bit of black and this needle and I just dotted here and there a few black marks along the edge, anywhere there was a, a bit of a dip, I'd, I'd add in a little bit of black paint. Of course you can use a paintbrush. <laughs> I just wanted to have the needle because it was giving me the look that I wanted. Anyway, black is very drastic, right? So I just uh, rub it on there and then um, with my finger just kind of lighten it up a little bit. Here, let's move on to the next texture which happened by accident is this little crystal I was working on. I did paint the sea glass blue and then I decided no I changed my mind and I, I wiped that off. You can still see the rim around it is blue but I'm going to put a generous layer of E6000 and then I'm just going to dip this into the rock salt and this is the salt that I just use the regular grinder for so it's the colored one. And now that it's dry, I left it for about 20 minutes or so just for that glue to catch on. Now I'm going to re-dip it and give it a, a bit more texture here. So another layer of E6000, then dip it again and let that dry. And here it is all dried and I did put that Glitter Glam nail polish on there. I just wanted to see how that would look if I left it that way. But no, I decided to go ahead and paint it. So again, just like I did the very first one in this video, I did the black coat first and then navy blue and then the green. And all the other colors, uh, the grays, and I did a little bit of black on this one as well, just like I did with the walnut. Uh, just uh, put the black inside the dips of those rock salts. This is my favorite texture of all, this one right here. And in the future, if I was to make some more, this is exactly how I would do it. Uh, taking a look at all of them, so the walnut is texture paint, the middle one is paper towel texture, and the last one is the rock salt texture. So you can see the, they all look great. I shouldn't say I have a favorite, but I think the mo most realistic one for rocks is the one with the rock salt texture. 
So, and then here's one, the sea glass with just paint. And again, you can give it texture with just highlighting. All right, guys, I ran out of time to do this one on video for you, but the selen selenite crystal bonds, I used hot glue sticks and just carved those. Okay, I used an X-Acto knife to carve them. So I used a, a smaller glue sticks and larger one and an X-Acto blade. And to get the color in there, I used a City of Gleams and the um, Glitter Glam. So in the next video, we're going to be covering... Uh, the salt lamp that just lit up there so cute. I kind of messed this one up a little bit So I want to remake it and I'm going to be doing that on video for you um, I mean it turned out great, but I wanted to have a, a little bit of a different shape to it So we'll do that one in the next video. We'll also do the uh, light up candles And I'll probably show you how I made the shelf in the next video as well We'll see how it works out. But anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the one that you watched Give it a thumbs up share with your friends and thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.